Hello everyone, I am Ajay. Welcome to Online Learning's Infotech Pitrain. Today we are going to solve Python based MCQ that came previously in Infotech exam. Uh, coming to our first question for today. What will be the output of the below Python code? Let's zoom this. Yeah. Hmm. What will be the output of below Python code? Var on where Okay, two variables are initialized. While loop, var on less than equal to 10, var to less than equal to 10, print. Okay, let's trace the output of this. So, for time being, I'm for uh, var1, I'm representing in v1, and uh, var2, I'm representing in v2. Yeah. So, let's see the values initially. Uh, v1 is 0, v2, v2 is 0, and uh, let's try to pin the output here. And uh, var1 less than equal to 10, yes var2 greater than equal to 1 yes then print var1 comma var2 v1 comma v2 output will be 0 comma n okay var2 equal to var2 minus uh, 1 so this become 9 and var1 equal to var1 plus 1 v1 plus 1 that is 1 next if v1 uh, var1 equal to equal to var2 no so it will again go to the loop um, it checks the condition yes it satisfied print var1 comma var2 1 comma 9 again var2 is decreased var1 is increased to 2 checked both are not equal again loop uh, loop condition satisfied again printing 2 comma 8 2 comma 8 yeah and next is uh, var2 is decremented to 7 and var1 is incremented to 3 yes then both are not equal loop condition satisfied again printing 3 comma 7 next um var2 become 6 and var1 become 4 both are not equal so a loop condition also satisfied again printing 4 comma 6 and next um printing is done 4 comma 6 var2 is decremented by 1 5 var1 is increased by 1 5 and this condition var1 equal to var2 yes both are equal so break the loop so this is the trace out and the output which we uh, which uh, we generated is 0 10 1 9 2 8 3 7 and 4 6 so as per the options 0 10 1 9 2 8 3 7 4 6 option 6 c is the correct answer come to the next question what is the output of the below python code okay temp how hello question mark how are you okay if temp is digit, is digit will validate. Uh, suppose this is the string one, then if this dot uh, is digit is applied, then it will result in a uh, boolean value true. Otherwise, it will return a result as false. So temp dot is digit is completely string, so it will return as false. So it will go to the else condition. If var one in range of ln of temp, okay. The range function will take the uh, ln of 10 that is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So, range function will take 19 that is it will generate sequence from 0 to 18 as it will generate n minus 1. So, till 18 uh, number will be generated here taking the condition like if temp of var equal to 0. So for every iteration, for every value, it's checking whether the string contains the uh, question mark in the particular index or not. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. At this point, the number 5, that is when var1 is equal to 5, this condition is satisfied. And this condition is satisfied, we are initializing a new variable, final underscore var, called temp underscore var1. Temp underscore var1 is temp underscore sorry temp colon 5 temp colon 5 means up to colon 5 excluding colon uh, fifth index so 0 1 2 3 4 hello so temp will uh, final value has h p l l o and it breaks a loop and again in this if final ends with u no it sends with o so this condition uh, not satisfied else Final equal final dot upper dot upper converts all uh, characters into uppercase. So there is condition as per upper, so it will convert to H E L L O. 
so that's done and we have printing output so the output will be let's see and number as per the options option b is the correct answer coming to the next question what is the output of below python sir jack and jill went up the hill for attempting code dot split okay so basically code dot split uh, what it's actually done is this is the complete string and split function by default it takes place as a uh, split operation for split operation so uh, when we do code dot split it generates a list uh, which contains each word like jack and jill so this way so when we do the split the spaces will be uh, considered as a uh, separation then uh, it will convert each uh, word into a list and it will store the complete list and we are uh, instead of having directly accessing in the for loop with the value temp for temping code dot split means every time it will uh, iterate so for uh, first it will be jack then next it will become and next becomes drill so on it will iterate till last we are checking temp dot temp dot end with so it will check jack ends with is no and ends with is no jill ends with is yes if here it becomes true in this case we need to print count code dot con that is code dot con of fill code dot con of fill in the complete string how many ills are there so in the complete string how many are there one and two so basically it brings count colon two and breaks it the break the file if you can see the options by here itself here there are like count colon two count colon three count colon three count colon one so there is only count colon three so only one option that is a so we can mark a as the correct answer here and the next question okay yeah choose an expression from the option given give the same logical outcome of the expression given below var1 var2 var3 var4 var5 okay so basically uh, we need to substitute these values and find out the uh, resultant of this expression that can be a true or false and uh, based on the expression value we need to also solve the all the four options and need to check which of the uh, equation resulting the same output as above if this is resulting to we need to check which of the uh, four of uh, equations resulting to and vice versa so let's trace this output of uh, the main one first R1 equal to 5, R2 equal to 5. Okay, so if you substitute R1 plus R2, that is 5 plus 5, 10. Then you substitute it, yeah. And 10 greater than R3 uh, divided by R4, yes, 10 greater than 1. This is becomes 2. 2 and R5, R5 is 0. 0 less than or equal to R1 minus R3 into R2. R1 is 5, 5 minus, um, okay, 5 minus R3 into R2, R3 is 1, 1, and 1 into 5, 5 minus 5 is 0. So R1 is 0, 0 less than or equal to 0. So yes, this also comes true. Previously for this equation we got true, and for this equation we got true. True and true is resulting true. So we need to uh, check the expression, or we need to uh, mark the answer which results in true. From the uh, from these uh, four options, uh, come to the first option. Bar uh, three greater than equal to bar four. Bar three greater than equal to bar four. Mm, one greater than equal to four. Yes, it's equal to two. And bar three equal to equal to bar four. One equal to equal to one. Yes, two. Two and two becomes overall true. But here there is a not. So not of two becomes false. But you want true. So this option is negative. Next, var4 greater than or equal to var2. var4 greater than or equal to var2. No, this is false. And uh, var1 equal to equal to var3. var1 equal to equal to var3. var1 equal to equal to var2. Hmm? This is also false. False or false results in false. And not of false is true. And we want the true. So option B is the correct answer for this. What is the output of the below pipeline code? This is the list of numbers given, tuple given, tuple plus one equal to, okay. Mm, yeah, so basically, uh, this is a tuple given and we are adding new data to it. So most of them will mark this as the correct option, but this is wrong. Uh, the option says is this code will result in error as a tuple is immutable. Yes, tuple is immutable, but we cannot change any data to, uh, of the tuple or existing data, but we can add a new data to the tuple. 
and here also there is a process of adding it. First of all, uh, there is a tuple, uh, the same tuple A B C, A B C or something. Then we want to add a new data. If we just add temp equal to or uh, some string, then it will result an error that uh, str type that is string test cannot be added to a tuple, something kind of that. And also, if you even try to add um, a in a tuple format like this, then also it will result, uh, it will take as a string only and it will result an error. So, to the only way to add is we need to mention the data and a comma. Here you can see a comma is mentioned. Then only this data is represented as the tuple, and this new tuple data will be added to the existing tuple to increase the tuple length. That is the tuple existing tuple. So the final tuple till here will be A B C D comma E. So let me let me take this tuple A B C D E. This is the tuple which we have up till now. For var one in range of five comma L of L. Okay. I comma alien of all uh, list of I alien of list one alien of list one means one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay so it's a uh, length of list is ten so five comma ten range of five comma ten which will generate sequence from five to nine in the first situation list one uh, list two dot append okay list two is a new variable so let's suppose this is a list two yeah mm -hmm. okay so uh, list two dot append of list one of var one minus one var one is five per situation let's draw this as well five six seven eight nine so initially var one has at this point v one at five so 5 minus 1 0, list of 0 is 1, 1 plus list of uh, 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1 plus 5, 2. So list will contain, list will contain 2 here. Next, um, var, two, var 1 becomes, var 1 increments to 6 here this time. So 6 minus 5 is 1, list of 1 is 2 and list of 6 is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 2 plus to 4. So 4 will be appended to list 2. That's done. Next, uh, V1 is again incremented to 7 here. For now, uh, list of 7 minus 5 is 2. 0, 1, 2, 1. 1 plus 7 means 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1 plus 1 again. So it, 2 will be added to the list 2 again. Then uh, V1 is uh, changed from 7 to 8 again. 8 minus 5 is 3. 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, this, yeah, uh, this becomes 3, 3 plus list of uh, 8, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 will be appended to the list. And the final iteration, v1 came to 9, list uh, dot append now, uh, 9 minus 5 is 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, that is 3, and uh, 9 means 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 3 plus 1, 4. And at this point, this for loop iteration completes us in the next for loop. Next one, we are using the print, so let's write that output here. Mm. Print of tuple of var1, list of var2, that is 0, comma length of list 2. This two means yeah 0 1 2 3 4 so it's basically like printing the first value of tuple and the second value uh, the first value of this first uh, the second value of tuple and this. so basically it will print like a2 b4 c2 b5 e4 a2 b4 c2 b5 e4 as per the option option c is the correct answer for this this is the correct going to the next question what is the output of the below python code mm, okay function given there's a dictionary being taken a function that's taking the parameters like sample that's the dictionary and a non object and this and key okay there are two data key and value so for this if key in sample 
So what is key? Key is x and value is 2. RES is none. Okay. Team sample. Team sample in the sense or uh, x. So x in sample. Yes, x is in sample here. So this becomes true. So R is equal to 2. So here we are updating a local RES, not the uh, that is the parameterized RES, not the original RES. So whatever changes we do, the RES will remain in this function only. And once the control exit from this function, RES again becomes null. So R is equal to sample dot update of key colon value. Key colon value means x colon um, 2. So previously it was 0, now it became 2 here. And uh, that's it. It because here also RES changes, but uh, we just stick into the none. So again, this function executed, and you print sample of x. So it should become it should print two as we updated RES. As I said, it's in global, it's still none. So option B is the right answer. Come to the last question for today. Consider the below Python code. Okay, which of the above old will produce a below? So we need to trace this trace the outputs of both the codes and to find which of the codes will print this as well, whether both them will print or any one of them will print. So, um, let's say the first output, all three that for iterate, okay. For char in my here, char in my then it is it's iterating each and every character at a time. And if char is each digit, so it will check uh, the places of each digit, that is 3, 4, 8, 2, 3, 4. If it's a digit, then uh, a new list which is initialized empty, is being appended with on that box and that is that, that is a new list my list will be appended with the number that is three four eight two three four this will be appended and in the my here my star dot replace of char common list so wherever numbers are there that is the, that particular character being replaced with an empty space so and that will be stored to the, the last thing again so each time numbers will be replaced with a space and uh, then uh, the numbers are being appended to the list. When we pin the string and the numbers, we get the output. This is the output. So code was satisfied. Coming to the code 2, everything is same. Only difference is here myester equal to myester dot replace, here myester dot replace. This is the only difference. So here you can check that. We are replacing the character. That is whenever the numbers are being iterated, I mean the visited. Then our uh, character may replace with space, but we are not storing it uh, anyway. Like here, we are storing to the existing string so that the update value being saved, kind of saved. But here, we are not saving, we are replacing it again. We are when we are iterating it, uh, as that is not being saved to any of the variable. So the number if 3 will be replaced with space again in the next iteration, 3 will be still in the string. So at the final output, this complete string will be printed. And the data, this uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, this data will be printed. So basically, code 2 will not produce the correct output. So only code 1 satisfies. So only code 1 is option. So that's it about uh, this video. All the best. Thank you.